I don't know about you, but I was really surprised when Apple announced that unlike Final Cut Pro for iPad, which requires an M1 or M2 chip equipped iPad to run, Logic Pro would be compatible with any iPad with an A12 Bionic chipset or later. But with Apple touting Logic as a full-on Pro experience, how does the app hold up on a variety of different iPad models? In this video, I'm going to check out how Logic Pro performs on four different iPad models. I pimped out 12.9 inch M2 iPad Pro, a base model 11 inch M1 iPad Pro, a 6th generation iPad Mini, and a base model 8th generation iPad. First off, I'll have a look at how these iPads perform in a real world kind of setting using the 80 plus track Menzana demo project that comes with Logic Pro for iPad. Then I'll load up the Logic Pro benchmark project from musicprod.com and see how many tracks I can load before each iPad melts into a bubbly puddle. This is a 12.9 inch M2 iPad Pro. It has two terabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Full disclosure, Apple let me borrow this while I was beta testing Logic Pro. I will have to send this back to them. As you can imagine, in normal day-to-day -day use and even in this big old project, the M2 Pro handles Logic Pro for iPad with no issues at all. As with all of the iPads I'll be looking at in this video, I've enabled the CPU and memory monitor up at the top there, and it is nigh on impossible to get this to really move all that much, really. You can slap multiple CPU-heavy software instruments into a project and add lots of effect plugins without Logic skipping a beat. The M2 Pro eats larger projects for breakfast. This one, as I mentioned, has over 80 tracks and Logic is quite happily cruising along with zero problems. Completely unsurprisingly, this is a fantastic experience. This is Apple's flagship iPad and it runs Logic like a dream. This is an 11 inch M1 iPad Pro. It has 128 gigabytes of storage and eight gigabytes of RAM. It's worth noting that while I don't have one here, this iPad has the exact same processor and RAM as the current M1 iPad Air. So you should probably expect identical performance from both models. And it's good news here again. Apple's M1 chip is ridiculously powerful and this iPad doesn't struggle with Logic Pro at all really. Despite only having half the RAM of the 12.9 inch model, the performance is practically identical in this big old project. Multiple software instruments, no problem. Loads of effect plugins, not even a stutter. If you have an M1 Air or an M1 Pro, you'll be able to run sizable Logic Pro projects with no issues. I certainly didn't see any problems with this project here. This is an iPad mini 6th gen. Released back in 2021, it has an A15 Bionic chipset, 256 gigabytes of storage, and four gigabytes of RAM. This is where things get really interesting. In this large 80 plus track project, the iPad mini really doesn't skip a beat, pardon the pun. Everything is silky smooth when opening and closing windows and plugins during playback. Tapping on the CPU monitor to switch to the memory monitor, you can see it hitting a much higher point than on either of the iPad Pros. Obviously, the Mini has quite a bit less RAM than either of those two models, but despite that, it has no issues playing back this project really smoothly. Finally, this is an 8th generation iPad. It has an A12 Bionic chipset, 32 gigabytes of storage and 3 gigabytes of RAM. This iPad has identical specs to the iPad mini 5th gen, so again, while I don't have that model to hand, 
you could probably expect similar performance from both models. This is the lowest spec iPad that will run Logic Pro and as such, you'd expect there to be a few issues, right? Well, not really actually. Keep your eye on the CPU meter as I play this back, it does hit a much higher point than we've seen on the other models and that carries over to the memory monitor too. Having said that, despite this project practically maxing out the iPad 8th gen's RAM, it still plays it back with no issues. You can open plugin windows, make edits, no problems at all really. All right, let's melt some iPads then, eh? This is the Logic Pro benchmark project from musicprod.com. The idea behind it is you download the project file, load it up in Logic Pro on your Mac, and then see how many active tracks you can play back before your Mac throws up a system error. With the round trip functionality Apple have added to Logic Pro, we can actually load this project up on an iPad. Now, the instructions on the site say to increase Logic's buffer size to max, which on Mac is 1024 samples. On iPad, you can only increase the buffer size to 512 samples. It's also recommended that you manually choose the max amount of cores that your computer supports. You cannot manually do this on iPad, so we'll just have to run with the settings that we have. Not exactly scientifically accurate, but we'll give it a go anyway. For reference, I ran this benchmark on my M2 Pro Mac Mini. It has 32 gigabytes of RAM, 12 core CPU and 19 core GPU and 200 gigabytes per second memory bandwidth. It is a beast. And during this benchmark, I was able to load up 100 tracks before Logic threw up an overload message. It'll be interesting to see how these iPads measure up to that performance. All right, let's start with the 8th gen iPad then. The project actually loads up, which is a good sign, but already even with just a few tracks enabled, you can see the CPU meter spiking. In fact, it only takes five active tracks to force a system overload, where Logic will prompt you to freeze some tracks before continuing. I eventually managed to get three of these tracks playing without the iPad shouting at me. A wee peek at what's on every track, there's a software instrument with loads of heavy duty plugins loaded on each track. Onto the iPad mini then. Again, the project is loaded fine and after a bit of back and forth, I can actually load up to nine tracks with zero issues. It's not until I hit the 10th track that Logic poos the bed and I'm forced to freeze tracks to continue. The M1 iPad Pro then, no issues loading the project as you might expect. And the CPU monitor is surprisingly docile even as I activate track number 20. In fact, things are looking good until I activate track number 32 when the system overload message appears and I cannot continue. Finally, the M2 Pro. Again, things start off well with no issues for the first 20 tracks or so. The CPU really starts to spike after that though and in the end it manages to deal with 35 activated tracks before giving up the ghost. How does that result measure up to your expectations? Bear in mind that this test isn't really meant for the iPad version of Logic, and we aren't able to properly replicate the recommended settings. With the buffer size only able to be increased to 512 samples, and the number of cores used out of our control completely. So that is a rundown of how Logic Pro for iPad runs on a variety of different iPad models. In the real world, you're not likely to run into any issues if you're using an M1 or M2 chip equipped iPad. The 2021 iPad mini fared surprisingly well, and as long as you're happy dealing with the smaller screen, this is a surprisingly well-performing, super portable way 
to run Logic Pro on the go. And the 8th gen iPad was actually surprisingly usable, though I'd maybe recommend sticking with Logic's stock plugins and instruments where possible, as throwing third-party AUV3s into the mix can bog the 8th gen iPad's CPU down fast. Having said that, Apple have worked some weird optimization wizardry to get a project of that size working on an iPad that you can grab for like under 200 quid nowadays. Madness. Let me know your thoughts on Logic Pro for iPad's performance down in the comments, and if you could give that like button a gentle caress on the way past, I'd really appreciate it. If you fancy giving Logic Pro for iPad a shot but don't know where to start, watch this video next.